let's talk about transverse myelitis. So this is a acquired autoimmune disorder affecting the spinal cord. The onset is usually between the age of 10 and 40. It's most commonly post-infectious or idiopathic. However, secondary causes need to be ruled out and these can be caused by autoimmune diseases or infections or perineoplastic disorders. If the disease affects three or more vertebral segments, it's called longitudinally extensive disease, and this increases the chance of other secondary transverse myelitis, such as perineoplastic disorders or a neuromyelitis optica. So the clinical features depend on the level of the spinal cord affected. For example, if you have a thoracic cord lesion, you might only have weakness of the legs, but if you have a cervical lesion, you might have weakness of the arms. So one of the main features is rapidly progressing weakness of the, of the legs. Uh, and this is usually flaccid, although it can become spastic later in the disease. In terms of sensation, you can have pain or dysesthesia or paresthesias below the level of the lesion. Most patients with transverse myelitis will have a, a sensory level, although some of them won't. And there will also be autonomic symptoms. Urinary urgency or retention or constipation can be one of the first symptoms of transverse myelitis. And you can also have bowel or bladder incontinence. In terms of diagnosis, you'll want to get an MRI total spine with and without contrast, and this will make the diagnosis, and this will also rule out compressive myelopathy, which can be a common cause of spinal cord lesions that are causing similar symptoms. A lumbar puncture is also needed. Uh, this will include a cell count and differential, a protein, glucose, a VDRL, looking for syphilis and oligoclonal bands and IgG index looking for multiple sclerosis and cytology looking for uh, cancer. The CSF can be normal or there can be an elevated CSF lymphocytosis usually under 100 or elevated protein level. On the MRI you can see T2 hyperintensity right here and these lesions are typically also contrast enhancing, such as right here. So in terms of evaluation, you'll want to work up secondary causes. Depending on the history, you may order different things, such as aquaporin-4 or anti-MOG or brain MRI to look for autoimmune diseases, such as multiple sclerosis or neuromyelitis optica or anti-MOG. Usually you'll send some metabolic labs, so for example B12, vitamin E, and serum copper deficiencies can cause a similar picture. For the longitudinally extensive lesions, perineoplastic uh, can be a cause of the disease, uh, and you can look for anti-WHO and anti-CRMP. These are typically from small cell lung cancers. Also, infections can cause a similar picture, and you can look for HIV or enterovirus or syphilis. In terms of treatment, for secondary causes, you'll want to treat the underlying disease. For example, for compressive myelopathy, uh, that would be spine surgery. For idiopathic transverse myelitis, the treatment is IV steroids, and if there's severe motor weakness, you can add on plasma exchange. Uh, other immunosuppressive agents have also been found to be effective in treating the disease, and physical therapy can be useful for people who are, who are having uh, the severe motor weakness. In terms of prognosis, most patients will have a partial to full recovery, which will occur a month or more later. A minority of idiopathic transverse myelitis does recur, and 
If you have any brain lesions that are typical of multiple sclerosis, these patients typically do progress to multiple sclerosis.